All right, so today I'm going to show you how to go uh, from these three images here in this bracket to this finished product here. And it's going to be very simple, so just follow along. So the key here, before you even get started in Lightroom, uh, is going to happen at the house. And that is to make sure uh, you get the proper exposures at the site. So what I mean by that is for your darkest exposure, you want to make sure and you can check the display on the camera that you go dark enough, check it before you take the photo and check it after you take the photo, that you're gonna have all of the detail on the other side of that window. So you're gonna be making sure that you have blue in the skies, that it's not just white, it's blue. You can see the difference between the blue sky and the white clouds. And then for the brightest exposure, you're gonna make sure that your darkest areas uh, in this photo be uh, somewhere uh, around here, they're going to be uh, sufficiently bright. They're going to be plenty bright because we can see over here, that's the area where it's uh, getting close to being completely black. So you're bringing light to the darkest area and you're bringing um, it dark enough to be able to see the detail in the brightest area. So you want these two photos um, in your bracket. This is our middle bracket here. Um, I was able to um, get all the dynamic range I need um, in this room from just three uh, shots. Each one is two stops apart. Uh, you might need to use a five shot bracket to get what you need. Uh, in that case, um, this will be still your darkest, this will be your brightest, and then you'll just have um, three in between these two and uh, don't go more than two stops apart. Otherwise, Lightroom might have trouble uh, connecting uh, everything together in the final HDR image. Okay, so here's the HDR image uh, that we made from combining uh, those three exposures. So the first thing I'm gonna do is go down to the bottom and click on Remove Chromatic Aberration and Enable Profile Corrections. This is going to uh, adjust the distortion from the wide angle lens that I used here. So we have our uh, the lens that I use right here, you can see. Next, I'm going to click um, Auto on the uh, Transform Corrections, uh, Constrain the Crop, um, and that usually does a pretty good job of uh, fixing your verticals. So uh, now I'm going to go up, and usually I would just use a preset to do all this, but I'll walk through each step. Um, sharpening, uh, somewhere around here, um, masking uh, for an interior photo, maybe somewhere around here, uh, a little bit of noise reduction, and i uh, leave the rest of these in the default setting. Um, and now here's where we get to uh, the main adjustments that we're going to make for the photo. So first off, uh, I'm going to bring down the highlights all the way, and now we're going to start to see uh, the view through the window which we were able to get from our darkest exposure and uh, shadows all the way up. And now we'll bring the exposure up uh, right around here. And see the whole point of this uh, to be able to have a bright interior and the view from the window is that we had uh, that dark exposure that we're drawing from and we had that bright exposure uh, that we're drawing from here uh, to make the interior bright. Otherwise, uh, if you try to manipulate and push things uh, too far, if you know without enough uh, dynamic range from your bracket, originally you're gonna get uh, noise when you try to brighten uh, your dark areas up here in the room. And uh, the bright areas that you're gonna try to bring down will just be too overexposed to be able to recover, they'll just be uh, completely blown out in white. Whereas you can see here, since we did take the time and make sure we went dark enough on that darkest exposure, we have all that detail. It's just right here for the taking uh, and we can retrieve that. And of course, uh, like I just said, uh, we got that bright exposure. And so we're not gonna have any noise uh, when we bump up the uh, exposure here in the interior. So uh, from here, let me just uh, put
put this somewhere around maybe right here. Um, and now this, you know, I'm not going to go into too much detail as to uh, the adjustments here. Uh, that's for another video maybe, but I just want to go over really how to get um, all the dynamic range you want uh, in your final uh, image here. So now we can see that the window is still a little bit too bright. So, and actually I'm going to bring up the interior to where I ultimately want to have this. So let's bring up uh, this interior. That's looking pretty nice and bright, but now the window is way too dark. I'm, I'm sorry, way too bright. So let's get out the adjustment brush. I'm going to hit K and um, let's just double click effect. So we reset all the sliders and we're going to bring the exposure down to say right around here and uh, turn the feather all the way down, flow all the way up. And then we're just going to paint with the brush over this whole window and darken everything. Then we're going to get out the erase brush and uh, actually let's zoom in just a little bit so we can uh, pay attention to this window. Let's get that uh, brush out. We're going to go to the erase uh, brush. Feather, uh, yeah, we can go around three, flow 100. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to click just once. Then I'm going to go over to the end of this line, hold down shift on the keyboard, click again. And this is a trick um, that allows you to draw a perfectly straight line from one uh, click to the next. So if like if I were to click here and then hold shift and click again, we draw a perfectly straight line. Um, so we'll just do this real click, uh, real quick. Click here, hold uh, shift, click again, and we just drew a nice uh, straight line. But this is a uh, the curtain, so we're gonna have to go in and. Uh, do this by uh, freehand a little bit and uh, it's not always perfect in this situation um, we could choose the auto masking and so that's going to help us stay uh, on the side of the line that we want and that did a pretty good job there so auto masking is nice when you have a clear um, separation between um, one area and the next if this was not such a defined line say if this were um maybe like a frilly kind of a, a i don't know some kind of um some some kind of material that was like feathered like um i don't know um where there was like uh <laughs> stuff going back and forth uh, it wasn't just a straight line. Uh, the auto masking might have a little bit of trouble uh, figuring out what, what you're trying to do. Like what uh, two areas are you trying to keep separate? Um, so let's click down here at the bottom corner. Hold down shift. Click again. Uh, we could go up a little bit taller. Uh, let's try that one more time. Okay, that's good. And then again over here. Hold shift. Uh, we could get a little bit closer. Hold shift. And now we can um, fix that. And uh, let's do the middle uh, areas here. And you'll get good at this if you, uh, you know, do this for a little while. Um, sometimes it can get a little bit tedious, but in my opinion, having uh, spent a decent amount of time um, with different techniques, trying to do uh, accomplish this same end goal in Photoshop, I find that you're uh, best off just sticking in Lightroom. Um, Photoshop, bringing photos in and out of there, um, takes a lot of time and I just like to keep things simple. Um, like to keep everything in Lightroom. So that didn't take too long. 
Uh, we can zoom out here. And now uh, I think that's pretty good. I think I'm going to correct the uh, white balance. Uh, let's see, maybe right here. No, definitely not. Um, okay, yeah. Um, that's a little bit better. Um, let's brighten it up a little bit. That looks pretty good. Um, so that didn't take too long. Um, that's really the only major adjustment I did on this photo. Just darkening the windows with that adjustment brush and using, uh, using that shift click tool with the mouse. Um, the rest of the room I just adjusted with all of the uh, global adjustments here in the main, uh, the basic panel. Um, so that's it. And that's um, how I do all of my uh, interior photos. I do that um, adjustment brush little trick on the windows. And sometimes, you know, you got to zoom in uh, closer and um, brush in around and uh, the areas and use the feather a little bit and mess around with the auto mask but in general um, it's pretty quick all right so thanks for watching